Okay, so for today's lessons, we're looking, I'm going to look at this gene therapy. So basically also known as a human gene transfer, a human gene transfer. But what we're going to do here is we're going to use a vector to transport or to deliver the nucleic acid into the patient cells, something similar to the like a drug treatment here. For example, if you have a headache, you take Panadol. So now you have right, a person having genetic disease, then we treat it with nucleic acid. Okay, so gene therapy can be classified into these two forms. One is somatic cell gene therapy, and another one is a germline gene therapy. So from the words, you should know that somatic, eh, somatic cell therapy, uh, we transfer the therapeutic genes, okay, or allele into any somatic cells other than the gametes, germ cells, gametocytes, or undifferentiated stem cells. So in this case, because we only treat it at the somatic cell level, so it won't be inherited by the offspring. Are you clear? So as such modification affect the individual patients only and are not inherited by offspring, okay? Because we didn't correct or we didn't uh, change the genotype of the gamete, germ cells, or even the stem cells, okay? But a, di a different part here, we talk about uh, the contradicts here, the germline gene therapy. Basically, we do the therapy on those, okay? Uh, germ cells, for example, sperm and egg, and also uh, we talk about the embryo. Okay, we do it, the gene therapy on the embryo, and because it's gene therapy embryo, means embryo is undifferentiated differentiated stem cells, it can be passed on to the next generation. So modifying a germ cell, it okay, causes all the organism cells to contain the modified genes, so the change is therefore heritable and passed on to the later generation. So that's the difference between the somatic cells gene therapy and germline gene therapy. So at this moment, because we do not know what is the long-term effect of the germline gene therapy, so at this moment, germline gene therapy application in humans is prohibited, means that it's not allowed. Okay, that's why in China, they use the gene editing. So okay, the, the CRISPR-Cas baby created quite a number of the issues and also the debate okay, on arguments here because by right, gene therapy onto the humans is prohibited, particularly talk about the germline. So uh, two main approach that uh, we are consider here. Okay, first we want to replace, okay, or inactivating. But the thing here is what we're going to learn here is nothing to do with inactivating because inactivating, then we have to use the gene editing. We're using the CRISPR-Cas9 system, then we will be able to inactivate. Okay, replacing also, replacing is not really replacing, but actually we try, okay, we try to incorporate the healthy allele, okay, into it. So in this case, it still can be achieved. The best way is still using a CRISPR-Cas9 to replace the mutated allele with the healthy allele. But more to, in, in, in our chapter here, if we want to use a gene therapy, then it's more to what we call the supplement. What does mean supplement? We don't edit the gene. We don't edit the gene, but we give the healthy allele. Okay. Huh? So scientists focus on the disease, okay, for those disease that you want to use a gene therapy must fulfill these two conditions. First, single gene. The disease is caused by single gene. If multiple genes, difficult, okay? Second, the gene therapy only applied to the recessive disorder. Now, why apply to recessive disorder? Because when applied to recessive disorder, recessive disorder means that, let's say, for example, they have two copies of recessive allele, small r, small r, for example. So it means that we, small r, small r, both are mutated. They can't have the enzyme. They can't have the proteins. That's why disease develops. So if we can use a gene therapy, deliver the normal allele. So the effect of the normal allele, healthy allele, mask the effect of the recessive allele. Therefore, we have the functional protein. That is the idea. Are you clear? So basically, some disease, some disease, some diseases. Sorry, some diseases is uh, they are caused by the recessive uh, allele. 
Therefore, a patients with that particular disease, they must have the two copy of recessive allele. So it means what we're going to do here by using the gene therapy, uh, by using a suitable vector, we actually deliver the dominant allele. So the dominant allele masks the effects of the recessive allele. But if the disease caused by dominant allele, then we cannot, oh, never mind, we use the um, uh, uh, gene therapy using the vector to transfer or to deliver the recessive allele. Recessive allele cannot mask the effect of the dominant allele. So gene therapy, we must have these two conditions. The most important thing, the disease is caused by recessive allele or we call it as a recessive disorder. So some of the disease, they're actually very good so to uh, can be used here. Okay, can we use a gene therapy, cystic fibrosis, or the skit. Okay, the severe combined immunodeficiency, but not all cases or all form of the severe combined immunodeficiency, but those with the adenosine deaminase deficiency. Okay, uh, so the common vector that we use, normally we use the viruses, either retrovirus or lentivirus or small sphere of the phospholipid known as the liposome. They are the common vector. Occasionally, we may use a naked DNA introduced by electroporation or sonoporations or using gene guns, but the, this process are more tedious, okay, more tedious. Okay, uh, so example of gene therapy currently, yeah, we do it, okay, the eyesight of a young man with the form of heritable disorder called labeled congenital amaurosis, LCA, eh, LCA, in which the retinal cell die off gradually from the early age has been improved by using the gene therapy. The normal allele of, eh, normal alleles or the beta globin gene have been successfully inserted into blood to correct the uh, blood disorder, the beta thalassemia. Hemophilia B also, at least they have their symptom reduced and five children were successfully treated by using eh, uh, for the skin in 2013. So these are the examples of the gene therapy. So we're going to focus in two diseases as uh, we mentioned here, cystic fibrosis and also the skit. Okay, uh, so we start with the gene therapy and we do know that cystic fibrosis is caused by single allele of one gene only. It's a CFTR gene. Okay, so CFTR gene, what happened to this CFTR gene? The mutations, okay, create the recessive allele where there is a form of deletions, okay, De deletions. So it means that the 40 CFTR alleles are recessive. Heterozygous individuals still can make sufficient CFTR proteins eh, to remain healthy. And because the cystic fibrosis is caused by the single gene, so it's a good candidate for gene therapy. So single gene as well as the recessive. So what we're going to do here, theoretically, if we insert or, or deliver the normal dominant allele, then you can correct the CFTR, at least one copy. Are you clear? At least one copy. So what are the outcome of gene therapy in the cystic fibrosis in the trial? In UK 1993, what they do, they use a normal allele, means that dominant allele inserted into the liposome. Liposome is something like a very, very tiny cell, something like a cell, okay, which would then spray as an aerosol into the nose. So because we know that cystic fibrosis affect, okay, not only the lung, but all over the body, but the main part is the lung and the airway. So by using this spray, the aerosol, then this liposome, because this is a cell, liposome, so liposome can, eh, can enter, the, it's not can enter the cell, but the membrane of the liposome fused with the membrane of the cells and then this DNA or this allele, normal allele will be taken up by the cells by endocytosis. So basically you can see that this is in introducing the allele into the fused cell lining the nose. But what is the outcome? The outcome here is lasted for a week only because these cells have very short natural lifespan. Now, if you look at this, uh, what happened here is, this is the airway. So we have the first layer of the cell. Okay, second layer of the cell, third layer. So if it incorporates the liposome, liposome, will, okay, will only release, okay, or the, only the first line of the cell, sorry. Only the first line of the cell managed to take can you see that? The outermost layer, that layer to the lumen, every lumen. So only these cells, first layer of the cells will manage to get the normal allele. But the problem here is the natural lifespan of these cells 
epithelium, uh, epithelium here, they have a short lifespan. So it means that if the first layer of the cells gradually die off already, second layer of the cells won't have the CFDR again. So it means that you need the continuous treatment. Are you clear? Okay. Huh? In USA, they use a different approach. They introduce the normal allele into a normally harmless virus and then use this to carry the allele into the passage of the gas exchange system. Yes, the allele did enter into some cells, but because we use the virus, so they trigger the immune responses. Are you clear? Eh, because viruses. Viruses will trigger the immune response. So what is the bad thing about if we use the viruses, basically your body trigger the immune system, your immune system will have the memory cells. So the memory cells will record, oh yeah, I know. So the second time you introduce the same viruses, then the, the effectiveness won't be high. At the same time, the body of the volunteer will develop the, eh, the site effects, which is as a result, infections by the virus. Even though this virus is a harmless one, but it can still trigger because harmless doesn't mean that uh, your body will ignore them. Your body will still carry out the immune system. Then the immune responses will cause the, the this side effect. Okay. Uh? So basically successful or not? Not really successful if I want to discuss. In a one way, yes, successful because you can temporarily uh, 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 treat the symptom, but it's not last for long. It's not last for long. Okay. Uh? So to be used as a treatment, say, the normal dominant allele need to get into as many cells as possible and including the cell that divide to form a new. So therefore, this part has not, okay, has so far not been achieved. Okay. So it's not like continuously. Okay, so compared to the gene therapy, there is a better way to do it. Eh? It's a better way. So clinical trial have shown that a drug known as PTC124, eh? PTC124, has been found to allow translation just keep going across the stop codon caused by mutation. So because we do know that CFDR mutation a lot. Okay, so one of the form we know that is a deletion of three nucleotides. Not. Okay, but sometimes it also it can cause by the introductions of stop codon. So if the patients show this one, then we can use a PTC one to four. Why? Because we do know that when the translation process takes place, your ribosome will read. When you read until when you read until the uh, they read until this uh stop codon, then it will prematurely stop the translation process. So to avoid this, okay, to reduce this, we can use a drug called PTC124. What they do, okay, what they do here is the drug allows the CFTR to be made significantly relieve the symptom of some people with cystic fibrosis. So it means that it bypass this stop codon and continue, okay, to get almost the full length just that one amino acid may be missing or one wrong right? amino acid. So it's much easier to be done than gene therapy because it's a pill form. So it means that patient only take the, take the pill compared to the CFTR, oh, sorry, compared to gene therapy for CFTR, then the patient have to go to the uh, hospital every one week. Okay, so that is a difference. So this one is not gene therapy. Okay, this one is not gene therapy but it provides the alternative. If let's say gene therapy is not success, then it provides the alternative. This is a drug that patients can take in. Okay? So the last disease that we're going to look at here is the gene therapy in the skin. Okay? Severe combined immunodeficiency. Not all form, only the form that lack of adenosine deaminase. Okay? So it means that the patient with the skin, because we know that the skin also is the autosomal, recessive disorder. So it means that they have two copies of the allele that cause the disease and then the lack of the adenosine deaminase. So in this case, how we can solve it? We try to solve it by using the gene therapy. So gene therapy, basically we use a vector, encapsulates the dominant allele and then deliver to the cells. Okay? But because this is a blood cell, because skids involved due to the 
lack of the ADA. So if you lack of ADA, the T cells and B cells cannot proliferate. So that's why immunocompromised, right? Okay. So what are the approach have been done? So this is how I'm done on the children's. The children's T lymphocytes were removed and normal allele of ADA genes were introduced using a cells, okay, into the cells by using the retrovirus. Okay, so the cells were then replaced. So what we're going to do here is first, we isolate the T lymphocyte. Because T lymphocyte cannot proliferate. Why? Because lack of ADA. So then we take, isolate, take it out already, and then we use the retrovirus to deliver the ADA normal allele. And then we do we transfuse back. Okay, we do a transfusion. Basically, these T cells we return it back to the children. Okay. So again, it does not okay, offer a permanent cure. We need the regular transfusion every three to five months eh, because T lymphocyte will die. Okay. So we're necessary to keep the immune system functions. So children who have received the gene therapy for skids, some of them develop leukemia, a cancer, because of the retrovirus as a vector. So now we need to know what happens to this retrovirus. So retrovirus actually insert their gene into the host genome randomly. This is a problem. The host genome randomly. This means that they may insert their gene within another gene or more dangerously into a regulatory sequence of a gene which may activate the nearby gene that cause cancer. So what actually happened here? Now look at this. We have two forms of the genes. Eh? We have two forms of the genes. One, I mean, it's a cancer gene. We have the ratio maintained between the oncogene versus the tumor suppressor gene. So oncogene cause cancer. This one, one try to suppress cancer. So it must be in the correct ratio. So if you look at the tumor suppressor gene, if this is tumor suppressor gene, okay, so this is a promoter. So we want this tumor suppressor gene to be always switched on, right? So to suppress the formations of the cancer. But because of the retrovirus, what will happen? Retrovirus is the virus. They have the ability to integrate the host cell genome, uh, integrate the viral genome into the host cells. So try to imagine it integrate the from retrovirus. If they integrate like this, so it means that no tumor suppressor gene already. Can I see that? It's something like incorporates our insulin gene into tetracycline resistant gene. So tetracycline resistant gene cannot function. So therefore, in this case, because they do it randomly, okay, when they do it randomly in this way, then what will happen here, you can see that. You can see that it caused cancer because tumor suppressor gene is switched off already. Can I see that? Or an oncogene promoter, oncogene. Can I see that? Can I see that? Oncogenes. And this oncogene is regulated okay, by certain eh, tumor suppressor gene. As a tumor, the, the repressor protein, for example. Okay, it's regulated by the transcription factor. Okay, by right, this transcription factor okay, should stop okay, or regulate so the oncogene won't be expressed. But because of the, the random, okay the random uh, insertions of this retrovirus DNA uh, genome into the transcription factor. Can I see that? Okay, or make the transcription factor now no longer available. So no more transcription factor, the negative one. Can I see that? And what will happen here is it can be transcribed. Therefore, we get the cancer protein. You see that? Okay, no more transcription factor. So it means that the transcription factor may change and then it may activate the oncogene. So that's why you can see that it will cause the leukemia. And the one of the things that are very, very, I mean, that dangerous here is retrovirus also requires cell to be actively dividing for the transduction. So it means the cell must be very, very active in terms of the, uh, the, the, 
for the transactions means a delivery to be success. But the problem is if the cells very active dividing and you, you give this retrovirus, actually it increase the risk to generate or to develop the cancer active dividing, right? So this is the first generation. Now they change it to the, the second generation called lentivirus. So lentivirus is used to replace the retrovirus for safety reason. This lentivirus never carry the gene required, never carry the gene required for their replication. So means that they reduce the effect of the infections. So means that the lentivirus cannot replicate. Okay. And one good thing is lentivirus has the ability to integrate into the genome of non-dividing cells. So if non-dividing cells in this case basically means that they reduce the chance for the cancer. So the virus may disturb the function of the gene, cellular genes and lead to the activation of oncogene, promoting the development of the cancer. But because non-dividing cells, so it reduces. I don't say 100% no, but it's, it can reduce the, uh, the chance for the cells to develop into the cancerous cells. Okay, But one of the research, they have done it, not in the skits, but in the HIV. Okay, Experience no increase in the mutagenics or oncologic event. So it means that safer, lentivirus safer compared to the retrovirus. But both of them also have the risk of develop, a cancer development. Are you clear? Okay, but retrovirus will be higher. Okay, oh? so another way to do this actually is use the adeno-associated virus. Okay, adeno-associated virus. What we're going to do here is, so far, AAV is not uh, current known to cause any disease, okay? And also, they cause a very mild immune response only. And AAV can infect both dividing and non-dividing cells. But good thing here is the virus do not or does not insert its gene into the host, does not insert. So what will happen here, you can see that in this diagram. This is the adeno-associated virus carry the new gene, the gene that we want to put in. So the, when they enter into the host cells, what will happen here is they release the genome. But this genome won't incorporate into the host genome. So it means that it won't actually destroy or interrupt the, the, uh, the, the human's uh, host cells genome. But with this, can you see that? With this, Okay, the viral genome together with the normal allele, for example, then we will be able to get the mRNA. But what is the bad thing here? What is the bad thing? In this case, because they, this, okay, viral genome is not incorporated into the human genome, so means that when the human genome replicates, it won't replicate this. So means that only lasts for one generation. Can I see that? So it won't provide a long-term treatment in this case because when the cell proliferates, they won't replicate this viral DNA. So it means that the donated here, the delivered gene or, or, or normal allele won't be replicated. So only lasts for one generation only. Okay. Huh? So this is what we normally do. Can you see that? So the bacterium carry the plasmid with the clone ADA and then genetically disable retrovirus. So in this case, you can see that we can incorporate it in. When incorporate in already, we can retro eh, retrovirus will infect the T cells, transfer the ADA genes to the cell. So then we actually transfuse it back to the children. Then the children will have the proper immune system. Okay, or immune response here. So what are the ethical questions surrounding the gene therapy? What is the problem in top of the gene therapy? So in this case, how is the good and bad the disease uses of the gene therapy? How can good and bad uses of the gene therapy can be distinguished? So for example, in this case, uh, okay, you talk about okay, skid, okay, talk about okay, uh, cystic fibrosis, but some diseases is not, it's very, very mild. So should we use the gene therapy or not? So who decides which traits are normal and which cons eh, constitutes a disability or disorder? For example, cystic fibrosis we can treat. So how about intelligent? Can I see that? Are you clear? How about we talk about uh, uh, height? 
you want to treat using the gene therapy. So which trait consider normal, which not normal? Okay, and gene therapy with high cost. So means that only for the wealthy people only. So means that how about those who are poor? Okay, so could the widespread of gene therapy make society less accepting of people who are different? So because if let's say it's so cheap, everyone can do the gene therapy. But those who decided not to do gene therapy, will we consider them different from the, 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 the normal? Are they abnormal? So these are the questions. And should people be allowed to use gene therapy to enhance the basic human traits such as the high intelligence or athletic ability? Can we use this gene therapy or not? So those are the ethical questions surrounding the gene therapy. The least it means will be more, but this is just a basic one. Okay? So... The idea of germline gene therapy so far is still controversial. So it means that because we do not know the long-term side effect. So in, uh, for ethical concern, US government does not allow federal fund to be used for research on the germline gene therapy in humans. Okay. So with this, I have done for the today lessons, the gene therapy. So uh, we have more questions today to answer. It take 10 minutes to answer the questions. And then uh, we're going to discuss at one uh, 50, okay, 150. So please register your attendance now. So off the record.